Hello everyone and welcome back to Batman Miniature Game 3rd Edition Battle Report. Today for you we have 350 rep of Two-Face versus 350 rep of Batman even though the Batman crew does not feature Batman on a new table layout as you can see. I, I think this one turned out pretty well. It looks really neat. Like there's a siege going on outside a Joker amusement park even though Joker isn't here. But still, let's get things started by looking at the crews. So this is the exact same Two-Face crew as last time, being led by the man himself. Free Agent Hush, he has his sidekick Spice, Thug 6 is it? No, Thug 2 sorry, from the Back to Gotham star set just to fit in an extra gun and reputation. And then we have an assortment of gangsters, it is gangsters 2 with the shotgun, 3 with the rifle and, uh, sorry the Winchester, and 7 with the actual bolt action rifle at the back there. And as far as things done incorrectly, last time Two-Face's gun also has reload, so you might be asking yourself why does it have three ammunition if the most he can fire it in a game is twice? And that is an answer only Night Models can answer, so I don't know, but that was done incorrectly last time, he fired it three times, he should have only been able to fire it twice and not in succession. So that was done wrong, but everything else more or less was done right, and have already decided ahead of time that it will be the twisted coin for Two-Face that he is playing from the start, so the good coin is mixed into his objective deck somewhere. And here is the Batman crew that does not feature Batman at all. It's kind of like half and half for a new crew and half and half for like an old second edition favourite of mine even though they weren't that great. But the team is being led by Green Arrow, Oliver Queen. He has his upgrade that gives him reinforced gloves. I think they're, I, they're called something else but they give him reinforced gloves. The rule. He's being backed up by Nightwing, the other Nightwing, not the Arkham video game one. We have Spartan John Diggle, he is equipped with handcuffs. And then from the back to Gotham box we have the three cops, Merkel and the JCPD detective have extra ammunition. And the guy with the torch has nothing as per usual because it's cruel. And Gotham is cruel. So that is it, that is the crew. We will be back with things deployed in the 8 inches on each side standard deployment. So here we are at deployment, the Two-Face crew is on your left, we'll take a better look in a second, and the Batman crew is on the right. Two-Face will be getting first activation, and uh, they have one more model than the Batman crew. So here we have Nightwing there with Audacity as you can see, Spartan has Audacity, and then Merkel has Audacity, and Green Arrow has started up there in the building, he's got stealth as well, so hopefully he'll be relatively safe from the very many guns on Two-Face's crew. Hedgeman there with the rifle, with Audacity, the clown without, Two-Face, Hush and Spice all have Audacity and then the sniper up there in the building there as well. So we're about to get started in battle round one and we'll have to see if there's any objective cards being played. So there is only one card being played in battle round one and it is Die Hard for Two-Face's crew. Choose one model that isn't the boss if they're alive at the end of the turn you score the card. Simple, so it's in play along with the twisted coin and this is being played on Hush. Gangster 2 with his manual shotgun got the game started. He didn't have audacity but he was close enough to Two-Face that he got his free Inspire. He did the movement action to get to where you can see him and he placed a suspect marker with no other objective cards being played just yet. Officer Miracle was first up for the Batman crew and he just has to make things difficult. He did a movement action with audacity and he's underneath this ferris wheel which is a little... Can you see him there? He's down there, but he wanted to position himself such that he's in front of the suspect marker he put down, but obviously he has to be at least two away from where he started, and it has become a turn one snitch, so we know what this is, we've seen it every time a Batman crew is here, because it's basically their best card set, so as long as nobody ends their activation within four of it, it will score. Now, within four is potentially possible if someone is willing to sacrifice themselves, because they don't need to touch it, we just need to get within four. I think Two-Face might be the only one who can do that if his base will fit through this gap, which I think it will. But he'd obviously be putting himself in a very precarious position. But yeah, so Merkel is there, the suspect marker is behind him, and he can easily fit under that, so that's why it, it was a legal move. But back over to Two-Face for now. Spice was next up, but first we have to cover the objective card being played as a resource to get rid of it. For one, so this is the gamble. During a friendly model's activation, your opponent must draw one of their objective cards and draw the top card of their objective deck, sorry. And uh, they name a card. If the card they drew matched the one they named, nothing happens. If it doesn't match it, someone suffers the innervating one. Now, the innervating one is basically irrelevant. In turn one, there's not going to be any close combat, most likely. 
so it doesn't really matter. This was just spending a resource to get rid of a card that's on the good side, therefore it can't be played. So that's gone, and then Spice moved up, and with Audacity also put down a suspect marker, which is just outside of two of that one. Sorry, it needs to be outside of four, not outside of two. Uh, it's outside of two of your deployment zone that you can place at a minimum. So yeah, that's more than two outside of deployment, and it is now just over four away from that one there. Nightwing activated with Audacity, and he had more than enough movement to cover where he ended up, which was taking cover behind this truck here. He put down a suspect marker, he did have Audacity, and he's basically just closing the distance to the thugs over here, but not giving them a clear line of sight to him. So Thug 2 was the next activate without Audacity, so he didn't do much, he just moved up to the car, but first, uh, this was going to be placed as played as a resource, two faces of the coin. It got cancelled by Get Them Off The Streets being played as a resource for two, so Batman's crew only has one resource point left this turn, cancelling an objective card being played as a resource, but we're just going to cover what it would have done anyway, because it's kind of neat. You place a 24mm icon to denote a coin anywhere in contact with a friendly model, Depending on the side that's in play, models within 4 gain the following effects. If you're on the good side of the coin, friendly models in range would roll 2 additional dice when defending. If you're on the twisted side of the coin, enemy models in range roll 2 fewer dice, and then it would disappear at the recount phase. But it's been cancelled, so it's gone, but another one might appear later on. GCPD Cop 1 without Audacity activated, so all he did was move under the first wheel as well like Merkel did, and has ended up right there in the middle of the map. Hush activated next with Audacity, he did a movement action to get between the boxes where you can see him and then he took shots at Merkel, two shots because of the dice getting taken away from him moving. It would have been a miss if not for expert marksmen giving rerolls. One hit got through for one blood, one stun. The JCPD detective activated without Audacity, so all he did was a movement action which more than covered getting him into position at the Sir Greeting there but he wasn't close enough to Green Arrow to get uh, into Spy for uh, manipulate this turn. Two-Face activated and another The Gamble was played as a resource using up their last resource point for the turn. It's the guessing game, draw the top card, suffer enervating one. Doesn't matter for round one, it was just to get rid of it. So it is gone. He then, with Audacity activated, did he move to where you can see him and he did put down a suspect marker, which is obviously more than four away from that one. Spurn, otherwise known as John Diggle, was next up. He activated with Audacity. He moved forward, taking cover behind the limousine there, didn't do anything else with this turn, he's just in position with Nightwing, and he was the second last activation for the Batman crew. Now it's over to either the sniper up on the building, or the other rifle user down here. So it was the gangster down here that activated. Speaking of which, totally forgot to mention, but obviously this is the same list as last time, so the number of gangsters in the list provide two blood money counters. Didn't find any opportune moment to use them last time, that might change this time, so just mentioning the other thing. Also, as far as low and high caliber go, the compendium isn't updated yet, so it's still hearsay, but apparently high caliber, well low caliber was done correctly, apparently high caliber is that if you're shooting in optimal range, the strength die is the last die to go. So anyway, he moved because he could only really, like he could have moved here and taken a shot at Nightwing. He's in cover and can dodge with uh, efforts, so it didn't seem very worth it. So he moved into position, surrounded by more guns, and put down a suspect marker. And with that, it is over to Green Arrow to end off battle round one for the Batman crew. So Green Arrow did activate with Audacity and he used his grapple gun, which sadly means he can't use good aim in the same turn because they're both special actions, so he couldn't fire and move because his bow has aim. He is super quick though, he's movement 4 in 2nd edition rules, plus acrobatic, and then also using the grapple gun for an extra 6 gave him more than enough to get him down there where you can see him, and he couldn't attack, so he just ended his turn there. I guess he could have put down a suspect marker, but we'll see he did that. And that means we're going over to the sniper on the building to end the turn. So the sniper in question, he didn't have audacity, so all he could do is walk to the edge of the building there, and there is a suspect marker that Oliver decided to put down because he had a uh, manipulate that he didn't do anything else with. So that is going to end battle round one, which does mean that Die Hard has scored for Two-Face because Hush is fine. And in phase four for battle round one, they are also playing a stick to the plan. When it goes into focus, you must have more suspect markers in play than your opponent. More than enough with one, two, three, four right there. And also the snitch does score that Merkel put down because nobody got within four of it. So with that, we're jumping straight into the opening round, or the opening stages of Battle Round 2. So this is the state of the board at the top of Round 2, and it will be Two-Face's crew getting first activation again. 
And as far as Phase 1 or Phase 2 cards being played, there is one. The Balance of Justice is being played once it comes into focus. Give it a second. Any second now. Any minute now. Here it comes. Good enough. Twisted side, an even number of models are removed from the game as casualties this round. So, as long as two people die, or four, but that's ambitious, then this will score. So it's just in play for the entire round, and that is the only card being played. Take a quick look at who has Audacity. Basically the same for the Batman crew. Uh, Merkel has it, but he's hidden under this. <laughs> and Green Arrow has Audacity. And you can see where Audacity is here with Two-Face Hush, the manual shotgun, and Spice as well. So with that, let's get started. So Hush got Battle Round 2 started for Two-Face's gang. He used Gunman as his special action because he had Audacity. He shot once at Merkel, it did 3 blood, 3 stun, which left him on 4 and 4 and he's a 5-5 five, five model so he was still conscious so the second shot also went into him and that did 4 blood, 4 stun. So unfortunately for Merkel the curse continues and he has been splatted and he did have Audacity which in turn has scored heads or tails. Twisted side when it's in focus, I think it is now. A friendly model inflicts at least 4 damage on an enemy model that has an audacity marker. So that has scored, he then did a movement action to where you can see him. He is also now entirely out of ammo as well. So Green Arrow I played next but a quick note about the Two-Face card that's in play for the round about the number of models removed as casualties for this round. It doesn't specify enemy models so it's just models in general. So if the Batman crew take out some of Two-Face's gang, that's an even number. If they take out someone else, that's it back to being odd, so it's a little bit harder to score than it might appear. But anyway, Green Arrow activated, he used Good Aim as his special action, which is plus one attack dice. He's a master marksman, so he's re-rolling attack dice, and he did his once per game multi-arrow, which is a three base, plus the strength die, plus the extra from rapid fire. He shot into Hush, more than within range, and yeah, Hush is defense, defense four, so it's not a given that it was all gonna go through. Three of the arrows smacked and thudded into him for six damage. He has seven endurance, so he has one health remaining. So next up for Two-Face was the sniper with the bolt action rifle up here. He stayed still, he's got good aim. He shot at the illuminated cop down here for the hit and the strength die. Both got through for six damage, which does mean he is gone. So that is two models taken out this turn in total. And it does also score a quick one victory point for catch a bullet, inflict at least six damage of any type in a single ranged attack. He did that, and he didn't do anything else, so that has scored, and already the Batman crew are two models down. Nightwing activated, and he decided to go right after the big bad. He sprinted round the corner into Two Face's face. He exerted one effort, Two Face did not, and all said and done, three hits got through for six stun damage in total, leaving. Two-Face on one stun damage remaining on his willpower. That is the second target this turn that's managed to stay either alive or conscious with one hit remaining. So Two-Face has activated in retaliation. He struck at Nightwing. He has reinforced gloves. He's not actually that bad in combat. He's got like a sidekick stat line for close combat and he does have the judgment trait he can use on anyone he knocks out. Nightwing though, he's pretty good at defense as well. He didn't want to pull back and try and shoot him because Nightwing can dodge. So he just tried to punch him, got uh, hit through for two stun and then he retreated over to where there's some more guns to protect himself. So they traded blows, Nightwing did a bit better than him but they're both a little bit stunned. Spartan activated with Audacity, he moved up to where you can see him taking cover behind the car that also has a clown at it. And he shot Hush in the back, two hits got through, two blood, two stun, so that is Hush removed. So we're at three casualties for the round, and now it's over to oh, Spice, the manual shotgun guy, or either of these two for Two-Face, and then back over to the GCPD detective as the last man standing that hasn't gone yet for the Batman crew. Gangster 2 with his manual shotgun activated. From where he was, the expansive cone just touched Green Arrow's base, so he shot it without moving. The strength I failed, so it did no damage. And then he just moved a little bit closer, where you can see him there, and then did nothing else. So unless they want to pass, it is over to the GCPD detective to end the turn for the Batman crew, and then there's still two, no three, including Spice, three other people to go for Two-Face. A pass was used, so the bolt action rifle gangster down here activated. He didn't move, he didn't have audacity. He shot his rifle at Nightwing, who exerted himself 
to dodge to take away a die and he was partially obscured by all these boxes and such if he gets street level but one hit still got through so that is three blood damage to him so another pass got used so spice activated she moved around the corner so she could see green arrow she shot her low caliber little derringer at him at near enough point blank range one hit managed to get through after he exerted one effort to dodge and it did two blood damage so jcpd detective activated he was within eight of green arrow he moved, he put down a suspect marker, and it has become a second snitch. And given that the last person to do anything this round is him, it's basically, it's insta scored, more or less. So let's see what this clown is doing to end off battle round two. So without Audacity, there wasn't really much he could do. He couldn't really see Nightwing, so he just moved and has placed himself here. Now that does mean at the end of the round, Hush and two cops got taken out, so that is an odd amount. So the card will just be discarded, the, the balance of justice. It does not score, it's gone, uh, but we will be back after an initial check to see if there's any end of round cards to be played. So at the end of the round, everything, eh, sorry, everyone who has stun damage is healing one, so the one that Green Arrow used is gone, one of Two-Face's stun damage is gone, and one of Nightwing's is gone as well. There's one card being played by Two-Face's crew, it is yet another stick to the plan, because they have indeed done that, and they have more suspect markers in play than the Batman crew. So... That covers everything, no other objective cards being played, time to move into battle round 3. So at the top of round 3 it will be the Batman crew finally getting first activation and boy do they need it, they only have 4 people left, all of which have audacity. And you can see who has audacity for the Two-Face crew, uh, let's see, it's Two-Face, Spice, the manual shotgun guy and the clown. And one objective card is being played at the start of the round, in phase 2 specifically, Master of Manipulation. It's Hush's card, even though he's not here anymore. And if we get that in focus real quick, if you use fewer resource cards than your opponent this round, to score the card. So it's just, if nothing else, it deters the use of objective cards as resources from the other side. So the first activation of battle round 3 was Green Arrow. He sprinted past everybody into base to base with Two-Face to punch him upside the head. He only needed to do two stun damage. He did four, so Two-Face is knocked out and will not be getting a turn this activation. Didn't score any cards, but that is at least a powerful gun taken out that could have fired this round into, say, Nightwing. So who to activate next for the Two-Face gang did provide a bit of a problem because basically all their guns have reloads, so him, her, him, well, Two-Face didn't fire, but he's unconscious, and him, they all fired last turn, which is why last turn was so good for them. This turn, all of them are reloading. All of them. None of them can fire. So the only person who could fire was the clown. He moved around the corner, expansive, shot at Spartan. It would have done one blood, one stun, but he has a Kevlar vest, so that reduces damage down to a minimum of one by one. So one stun got through on him. So in retaliation, Spartan activated, turned and shot his pistol into the thug. It would have done three blood, three stun with the hits that got through. However, non-lethal ammo was played and flicked damage with a ranged attack but changed all blood markers into stun. So instead of doing three and three, it did six stun, which is more than enough to knock him out. And then Spartan moved his eight inches, using the car for cover in case the next turn he might try and shoot him. And now it's over to one of the many people in Two-Face's crew who can't shoot this turn. So Gangster 2 with his manual shotgun that he's in the process of reloading, activated with Audacity. He ran round the car, got into base to base with Spartan and tried to punch John Diggle and he was having none of it. He took no damage and as things stand, a pass could be used, a couple of passes could be used. Or Nightwing or JCPD Detective will activate. Nightwing activated and he shot along here into base to base as something comes through my door from the post and punched well, no, didn't punch, he used his electric batons on the rifle wielding gangster which shot at him before, did six stun, one more than was required to insta knock him out so he will not be getting an activation this turn. So Spice activated, she went round the corner even more and then did a reveal on the suspect marker that Green Arrow had placed the turn before and then did nothing else because she's busy reloading her little Derringer. So it's over to the JCPD detective to be the last activation for the Batman crew, but there's still that guy up there who's just going to sit there and oh that's it because everyone's unconscious so jcpd detective took shots into the back of gangster 2 here didn't do well with his rolls at all one hit got through for one blood one stun he then moved tucked into that building so that the guy on the roof next turn can't just shoot him speaking of which he would activate he can't do anything he's reloading to fire next turn so we are just going to go into the end phase there because everyone else is unconscious 
Master of Manipulation is not scored because nobody played any resource cards, so it's just discarded and gone. And uh, yeah, we'll be back in a second to see if there's any Phase 4 cards being played and whether or not anyone has woken up. So everybody who is conscious has healed one stun damage. And as far as wake up checks go, the clown has stayed unconscious. However, the thug and Two-Face both rolled super low on their dice, so they are both conscious but knocked down. And getting the trifecta, Two-Face's gang have played their third and final stick to the plan for having more suspect markers in play than their opponent. So a lot of points in total scored there. Let's move on to the final battle round. So at the top of round four, it will be the Two-Face crew getting first activation, which I'm sure they can do something deadly with. Every survivor of the Batman crew has audacity. Everyone except the unconscious clown thug and the sniper on the roof have audacity for Two-Face's crew. And no crew is playing any phase one or phase two objective cards. So it's just a last turn scramble for victory points. Uh, I think the Batman crew is going to have to try hard to take this, but let's see how it goes. So Two-Face activated first and had a little bit of a rules dilemma regarding one of the objective cards for Two-Face's crew. He stood up so he was suffering impaired movement but he had more than enough to move where he was so that he was comfortably in between Nightwing and Green Arrow. But he moved before firing so his 3 plus strength die goes down to 2 because you lose 2 for moving. He opted to shoot once at Green Arrow and once at Nightwing and this was in order to try and score an objective card for shooting at two models and landing at least one hit. Both exerted effort to dodge because they're both acrobats which means you lose one die from each attack, which would technically equal zero. The criteria for the card just says that you cause them damage. An effort is a self-inflicted point of damage, so it seems like it wouldn't score, but it's a little bit tricky mixed in there. They're comfortably ahead, so we are going to count it how it seems to be, which is the acrobatic dodge takes away a die, so there's nothing left, but you're still damaging yourself and not having the enemy da damage you. A little bit of an odd mix there. Either way, Two-Face has gone and it's over to the Batman crew. The JCPD detective activated. He came around the corner to where you can see him next to Green Arrow there and he revealed the enemy suspect marker that was there. In order to score a comb through the evidence, you reveal an enemy suspect marker, then you draw two and discard one from your objective deck. So that is two points on the scoreboard. It counters one of the stick to the plans, if nothing else. The sniper up on the building activated and running out of targets that aren't in cover, he opted to activate before Nightwing got the chance to move. Shot at him, Nightwing used another effort to use dodge, but the strength die still got through, so that is three more blood. He has one blood damage remaining. Green Arrow activated and also used his grapple gun to grapple up onto the building and attack the sniper up here. He did six stun damage, more than enough. I think he has five willpower to knock him out and also score. Clutching his straws for any victory points here, they won't see me coming for inflicting damage on an enemy that did not have line of sight. And he didn't because he was right down there. Spice activated and moved round the corner here to shoot her derringer in close range so her low caliber was giving her a bonus. And she got two hits through for four blood on the JCPD detective, but that was not enough to kill him. So they've got the curse that the Batman crew had in their first turn or second turn where they just didn't do quite enough to take people out. Spartan activated and he just ran away, touching the suspect marker that was there and then doing a reveal on it to score a second, comb through everything, reveal an enemy suspect marker, draw one discard, uh, sorry, draw two discard one, two more points on the board, so who is left to go for Two-Face? The manual shotgun guy who is now kind of free to move, he's got to stand up and there's no way he can move and fire his rifle, so I'm not sure what else he'll do, but one of those two and then back over to Nightwing. So the gangster here just stood up and tried to swing some punches at Nightwing, not to try and get any points on him, but to use Time Bomb as a resource just to mill it out of the deck at the last second to try and draw something that can score. Immediately after making a dice roll, change the result of one of the dice to match another dice roll. It meant another hit got through, Nightwing still easily dodged them though. In what could be a very significant move, Nightwing activated and he just ran away over to the Batmobile and placed down a suspect marker which became the third snitch and I don't think the last person to go isn't going to get it so this is an automatic score. I guess they were keeping a snitch locked in the, the, the Batmobile for some reason. That's where they left it. So unless he can do anything that will score anything that will be the end of the game. So there isn't anything he can do to trigger any other objective cards at the end of the game so we are just going straight to the final scores and I don't think it's as clear and cut as it was originally. I actually think this is going to be pretty close. So. Organized crime, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
8, 9, 10, 11. And notice there wasn't, again, even sticking on Twisted's side, only 11 points and not many of those cards that scored were two-faced ones. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Once again, the snitches are what cinch it for a Batman crew that suffered heavy losses early on. Although that is a neat way of balancing it, like the Two-Face crew can have a really amazing turn of shooting, but then all of them are reloading. One of their twisted side objective cards can be played as a resource to automatically reload instantly, uh, which is an interesting thing, didn't have them in hand at the time to make a difference though. But yeah, their objective deck, I don't know, there's so much, I mean every objective deck has a certain degree of RNG, because you're drawing cards randomly, you've got to mill through them to try and find the cards you need, Getting all those snitches early is as equally lucky as getting all the stick to the plans, I suppose. But the Two-Face crew specific cards, I don't know, they've got an extra layer of RNG on top of them. Oh, I don't have the deck handy, let's see how far away the good side coin was, not that it would have made much of a difference, but still. It has to be one of the, like, most of the deck got milled here. It has to be one of these. It was the second to last card in the deck. That's the way it goes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching this battle report and stay tuned for more Batman in the future. Not sure who will be taking to the field next time. We might give Two-Face a rest. We'll see. Ta-ta for now.